On the day of his son's wedding, a man is humiliated by the bride's parents for being a janitor. But what no one could imagine was the gift he had brought for the bride and groom. Peter was excited as he drove to his fiancé's house, where his in-laws would finally meet his father. The night was quiet, with a clear sky and the stars shining as brightly as his eyes when he imagined the two families together for the first time. For the young man, that dinner was another important step towards his wedding, a moment he and his future wife, Emily, had been looking forward to. His father, Thomas, a middle-aged man with a gentle and humble countenance, shared the same joy, overjoyed at the idea of seeing his son get married. You're going to love them, Dad. They're really nice people, even though they're a bit petty, said Peter. Emily had always been very fond of her father-in-law, admiring his simplicity and kindness. On the other hand, her parents, always concerned with appearances and status, were eager to meet their son-in-law's father, but with very different expectations. The evening promised to be memorable, but not for the reasons the bride and groom were expecting. As soon as Thomas was introduced to the girl's parents, the mood changed. The first questions were polite, but soon the conversation took an uncomfortable turn. And what do you do for a living, Thomas? Asked the young woman's father with a look of curiosity. Without hesitating, the humble man replied proudly, I'm a janitor at a university. I've been working there for many years now and I really enjoy what I do. An awkward silence filled the room. The couple exchanged looks of disappointment, clearly disapproving of their new son-in-law's father's profession. Emily, sensing the tension, tried to change the subject, but her efforts were in vain. Of course. You see, we have nothing against you, Thomas. It's just that we were hoping for something more for our daughter, commented the mother with a tone of disdain that made the poor janitor feel belittled. He looked at them a little upset, which was understandable, and said, My son has a bright future ahead of him. Your daughter is certainly in good hands. The young man, sensing his father's discomfort, intervened. We love each other, and that's what matters, right, Dad? The bride's parents, trying to smooth over the situation, quickly added, Of course, of course, we adore you too, Peter. We don't mean that you're not enough for our Emily. It's just that we're parents. We have our worries. The dinner, which was supposed to be a celebration, turned into a tense and uncomfortable event. Thomas felt out of place, wondering if his mere existence was an obstacle to his son's happiness. The evening ended earlier than expected, with father and son returning home in a silence filled with unspoken emotions. On the way back, after a dinner that had been a fiasco, Peter apologized to his father for his in-law's behavior. The father, with his usual humility, smiled sadly and replied, Don't worry, son. What really matters is the love you have for Emily. You're marrying her, not her parents. Thomas has always been a man of simple principles. He raised his son alone after his wife died in childbirth. Despite the difficulties, he strove to provide him with a decent life, always working hard as a janitor. His world revolved around Peter, and that poor man did everything he could to ensure that his son had at least the basics. Thanks to his father's dedication and support, the boy grew up to be an intelligent and determined young man. He got a scholarship at a renowned university where he met Emily, the daughter of a successful couple. They weren't millionaires, but they had a comfortable life and certain social pretensions. Their relationship blossomed during their college years. They worked and saved money, dreaming of the day they would get married. The girl was very humble, unlike her parents, and didn't care about wealth or superfluous things. She just wanted to live forever with her beloved. When they finally set the date, Thomas was as thrilled as his son. He never imagined, however, that the meeting with the bride's parents would be full of rudeness and unpleasant comments because of his profession. The memory of that dinner remained imprinted in the janitor's mind. He couldn't forget the look of contempt on their faces as he told him what his job was. Another thing that upset him was when they talked about the wedding presents. And what grand gift are you going to give them, Thomas? The couple had asked him, implying that any contribution from him to the wedding would be insignificant compared to what they themselves could offer. In the days that followed, the man relieved that moment, feeling diminished and insecure. He knew that the wedding would be a big celebration, with the substantial financial contributions from his son's in-law's parents. What could he, a simple janitor, offer that would rise to the occasion? 
The poor man spent sleepless nights thinking about what he could do for his son's wedding. He wanted to show his love and pride for Peter in a meaningful way. Maybe I don't have material riches to offer, he thought. But I do have something that money can't buy. All his life, Thomas had been a generous and creative man at heart. He reflected on his years looking after the university, the corridors he swept, the rooms he cleaned, and the countless stories he witnessed on the walls of that place. In those moments of reflection, an idea took shape in his mind, something unique that only he could offer the couple, and that his heart loved very much. I hope they like it, it's very special to me, he murmured. Looking at the present, his heart was full of love. The night before the wedding, Thomas laid thinking about his whole life and how things came to be at that moment. His son was marrying a beautiful woman, and he had fulfilled his dream of being alive to see the wedding. Although he was very happy, it was true that his heart was heavy, knowing that he couldn't offer something great so he would give what he had. Let's hope it's enough. When I have more money, I'll buy something more expensive, he whispered, feeling sad as he considered his financial limitations. The big day finally arrived, and the wedding was set to be an intimate and meaningful event, just as Peter and Emily wanted. It was supposed to be small, with just a few close friends and their parents. However, when they arrived at the ceremony venue, the couple were met with an unpleasant surprise. The simple decoration they had chosen had been transformed into a spectacle of luxury and opulence. They quickly discovered that the girl's parents had interfered by hiring a wedding team to change everything. Instead of an intimate event, they wanted a big, extravagant ceremony. This is our gift to you, honey. A wedding fit for a princess, they announced proudly. Emily, annoyed and frustrated, saw her dream of something simple and personal disappear before her eyes. What right did you have to do that, Mom? It was my special day, not yours. The two of them, however, ignored her disappointment, convinced that they were doing what was best for her. The groom, realizing how upset his beloved was, tried to calm her down. It's okay, honey, it's still our day. What matters is that we're here together, he said trying to make her forget the fight and focus on the happiness of finally being together forever. Meanwhile, the janitor arrived. He arrived at the wedding venue wearing the best suit he could find. The man, as soon as he set foot in the place, was enchanted by the decorations, totally oblivious to the fact that it was the doing of daughter-in-law's parents. His face glowed with happiness, eager to see his son get married. Oh my God, how beautiful. My son must be jumping for joy, he thought as he looked around. However, his joy was quickly overshadowed by the snobbish behavior of the bride's parents. Look, Mr. Thomas, we're paying for all this. It's perfect, isn't it? And what did you bring for the couple? I hope it wasn't a broom kit. They mocked him, causing laughter among the guests they themselves had invited without asking their daughter. People who were just as petty as they were. The man felt humiliated, his cheeks flushed with embarrassment. The disrespect and insensitivity of those two hurt him deeply, but the janitor kept his compassura, trying not to let the joy of the day be spoiled by their mockery. Thomas faced the cutting words of that petty couple with his humility and dignity, although he was certainly embarrassed by the treatment he had received. He was no stranger to situations in which people tried to belittle him. So, instead of lowering his head, he responded with a grace that left everyone around a little uncomfortable. It's really wonderful that you can give your daughter such an incredible wedding. She is, without a doubt, a very lucky girl. He said sincerely, showing his true self and making some of the guests feel uncomfortable with their own petty behavior. He then added that his gift would be delivered later, as it was something of great emotional value and he preferred to give it to the bride and groom after the ceremony so that the focus would remain on them. This only irritated Emily's clueless parents even more, who wanted to ridicule the poor guy at all costs. The wedding went ahead, with the bride's parents still trying to outshine the janitor. During the toast, they teased him again. So, Mr. Thomas, where's your very valuable gift for our children? We're curious, since you said it's so important. Faced with this situation, Peter intervened. Dad, don't worry, we'll love anything you've brought. Your presence here is our greatest gift. Emily also expressed her affection, saying, I love you like a father, Thomas. Anything you give us will be very happy. Don't mind my parents. The girl's words made her parents visibly uncomfortable because they couldn't accept that she also had respect and love for her father-in-law. Then the man left for a moment and returned with a huge package. 
Everyone was curious. He approached the bride and groom with his gift. The guests watched in amazement as the man handed over a large, carefully wrapped painting. When Peter and Emily unwrapped the present, it revealed a painting of a forest, a serene and pleasant landscape that exuded tranquility. It wasn't just a painting, but the rude couple were quick to show their contempt. Was that it? A painting? My God, Thomas, are you serious? However, what really amazed them was the signature in the corner of the painting, which they only noticed when they got closer. The girl's parents almost fell over backwards when they recognized the artist's name, Henri Delacroix, a signature that transformed the painting from a simple picture into an extremely valuable and renowned work of art. The janitor, looking at the painting with a mixture of pride and emotion, decided to speak up. This painting has a very special meaning for me. He began, his voice shaking. It has been passed down from generation to generation in my family. I don't have much to offer, but I wanted my son to have something that would be part of our history. Peter was thrilled because he grew up knowing that that painting, which was in his father's room, was the only thing he had of his grandparents, the people who raised him. When Emily's parents heard Thomas's words, they quickly approached the painting with expressions of shock and disbelief. Where did you get it? What do you mean it's been in your family for generations? They exclaimed, almost unable to believe their eyes. Emily was also stunned, looking at the painting and at her father-in-law since she was brought up in a rich family she had to learn about art, so she knew it cost a fortune. The silence that followed was disturbing, everyone in the room waiting for an explanation. Thomas, confused by the sudden reaction, began to tell the story behind the painting. He explained that the canvas had been painted by an ancestor of his, a French artist whose name he could barely remember. From what my parents and grandparents told me when I was little, he was an artist. But I never imagined that his painting was so valuable, he said, still not understanding the commotion he had caused. It was then that the bride's parents revealed the true magnitude of what Thomas had just said. Your great-great-great-grandfather. Are you talking about Henri Delacroix? They asked, their voices trembling with excitement. Thomas nodded, still a little dumbfounded, as he didn't understand the importance of what was being revealed. Yes, Delacroix was his name. He confirmed. They both looked a little puzzled. Even the other wealthy guests who knew art history were stunned. It turns out that Henri Delacroix was a renowned artist whose works had been lost over the years, becoming extremely valuable and coveted. There were rumors that Delacroix's heirs had never been found, and his lost works were considered treasures in the art world. Emily's parents, who minutes before had ridiculed Thomas, were now faced with the incredible discovery that the humble janitor was actually a descendant of one of the most famous artists in French history. The revelation came as a shock to everyone, especially them, who felt deeply ashamed of their previous behavior in front of someone who was probably much more important than they thought. The bride and groom looked at each other, sharing a moment of understanding and admiration for Thomas. The painting, which until then had only been a sentimental gift from his grandparents, now turned out to be a legacy of immense historical and financial value. Emily's parents, stunned by the discovery, tried to pull themselves together by apologizing to the janitor and treating him well, aware that they were now talking to someone very, very rich. Surprise and embarrassment were all over their faces as the room filled with murmurs and speculation about the unexpected turn of events. After the surprising revelation at the wedding, Thomas and Peter delved deeper into researching their lineage and discovered that, in fact, they belonged to the descendants of Henri Delacroix, the renowned French artist whose works had been lost, meaning that any work still in existence was worth millions of dollars. At some point in Henry's lineage, that painting was kept and passed on to the next generation. But as the painting was dated 1880, obviously, after several years, and with the mixtures in the following generations, it was even justified because Thomas had no proper knowledge of its history. This discovery not only validated the authenticity of the painting, but also revealed that a considerably large fortune was held in the name of his heirs. Against all expectations, father and son suddenly found themselves heirs to unimaginable wealth. Despite the sudden change in his financial situation, the man chose to keep his job as a janitor. His decision surprised many, but for him, work had always been more than a source of income. It was a part of who he was, a reflection of his character and dedication. 
The humility that had defined him throughout his life remained his greatest virtue, even in the face of the fortune he had just received. Emily's parents, on the other hand, drastically changed their attitude towards the janitor after the revelation. They tried to flatter him, perhaps hoping for a share of the inheritance, or simply ashamed of his previous behavior. However, Thomas kept his distance, treating them politely, but not falling for their attempts to get closer. His focus was on his family, his son, daughter-in-law, and soon-to-arrive grandchildren. Over time, the janitor and his daughter-in-law became close, developing a relationship that was almost like that of father and daughter. Thomas was there to support her at every important moment, showing the same love and affection that he had always shown Peter. That simple man's family grew with the arrival of many grandchildren, filling his life with joy and excitement. He loved spending time with them, telling them stories about his family's fascinating life and the artistic talent of his ancestor, Henri Delacroix. Each story was a life lesson, teaching them about humility, hard work, and the importance of maintaining integrity regardless of the circumstances. He knew that, despite all the money in his inheritance, the real riches in his life were the people who loved him and whom he considered with all his heart. The janitor proved that a man's greatness is not measured by his wealth, but by the size of his heart and the depth of his character, because humility and integrity are treasures that no money can buy. And if you like this story, I'm sure the next video that pops up on your screen will move you too. Don't forget to subscribe, give us a thumbs up and activate the notification bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. See you in the next heartwarming story.